Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can reclaim disk space on your Mac. Now a lack of disk space is actually something that probably wasn't as much of an issue a couple of years ago as it is now, believe it or not. Even though hard drives are getting bigger and bigger, with the widespread adoption of SSDs in computers, especially the MacBook Air, hard drive space is actually at a more of a premium now than it was before. The entry level MacBook Air only has a 64 gig SSD and space on those types of machines are extremely limited. And it's only going to become worse in the future as more and more computers move from large hard drives to smaller SSDs. So since your disk space might be limited, I'm going to show you how you can free up some space that might be just wasted on your computer. So a lot of this takes place inside the Finder. So we're going to open up a new Finder window first of all. And the first thing we're going to do is go to our library folder in our home directory. So by default, the library folder in your home directory is hidden. Now I did a video on this a while back on how to re-enable your library folder, and I'll put a link to that below this video. But another way you can actually reveal the library folder just temporarily is to hold down Command and Shift and then press G. And then you'll see this little drop down where you can enter a folder path. And the path you get to your library folder in your home directory is the tilde and then slash library. So then once you have that typed in, you can hit go. And in here, you'll see your library folder. So then from there, you're going to want to go into your application support folder. And in here, there's a list of all different applications you might have installed on your computer at some time or another. Now, for the most part, you don't want to touch many folders inside the application support, just because many of these applications are probably still installed on your computer, and you probably still use them quite frequently. For example, I'm not going to get rid of my GarageBand folder because I still use GarageBand and it's still installed on my computer. But let's say, for example, this wallpaper's HD Lite is something that I've uninstalled and that I don't use anymore at all. Well, then you're actually free to just drag it out of your application support folder and into the trash as long as you don't use it. It's also best that if you don't know what the folder is for to leave it in there because it's probably something you'll need. And if you do by chance delete one of these folders, and it belonged to an application you still used, that application will no longer function properly and you'll probably have to reinstall it. So just a word of warning. Now the next thing you can do is go to your hard drive, so Macintosh HD, and then from there, library, and then scroll to the bottom and go into the widgets folder. And in here you're going to see all the different widgets that are installed on your computer for dashboard. Now no matter if the widgets are active on your dashboard or not, they're still going to be in this folder. So let's say, for example, that you've installed some custom widgets that you don't use anymore. You can actually just delete these. And just like in application support, if you delete ones that you still used or still needed, they will no longer work and they won't be on your system anymore. But it is a nice way to free up a little extra space, assuming you've installed a lot of widgets. Now another thing you can do is in Macintosh HD and then library, if you go into your caches folder, there'll be a whole bunch of different caches in here. Now while my cache folder is pretty small, on some systems there may be a ton of stuff in the caches folder. And for the most part, if you delete anything in here, it's not going to harm your system because they are just caches. And sometimes these cache folders can reach up to several hundred megabytes in size, so it can be nice to get rid of some unnecessary files. But once again, if you don't know what the folder is for, you probably shouldn't delete it just because you don't want to accidentally mess something up. Now you can do the same thing for the caches folder in your home directory. So if I go to my home folder here and once again press command shift G and go to my library folder, I can go into the caches folder here too and dump some stuff that I don't need. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff in this cache folder that I could probably get rid of. Just for example, in my com.apple.software update folder, there's a 13.7 megabyte cache file, and while it's not especially large at all, these can, especially with the software update folder, once again reach hundreds of megabytes in size over time. Now one last thing you can do is remove extra languages, and this can be achieved by using a program called Monolingual. And you can get to this by going to monolingual.sourceforge.net. And over on the right hand side here, you can download the program. 
and after you've installed Monolingual, you can open it up, and from here it's going to give you the option to remove several languages on your system that you don't use. And this can free up actually gigabytes of space, which can be especially useful on smaller drives. So I don't know any of these languages here, and I have no reason to keep these on my system. So I can check any language I want, and as many as I want, and then remove all these languages, and it strips all the apps of their language files, which can be very large for all these languages. I can also remove several different types of input methods, as well as architectures. So once again, as with everything else, you should always be careful when you're uninstalling languages so you make sure you don't uninstall an important language such as English. So there's some ways to free up quite a bit of disk space on your Mac. And if you follow all these tips, you should be able to free up up to gigabytes of space, which can be very useful in some cases. And as always, if you have anything you'd like to see me do a how-to on, make sure to send me an email. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.